Uh, welcome back to Dubster Dive, the series where we talk about an English dub of something and you all have a laugh at my incompetence or something, I don't know. And this time we're covering something definitely a bit different. Love Stage. Yup, a BL full-on yaoi anime. I feel less hetero already. And keep in mind, I'm the guy that's known around here for liking traps. Jokes aside, you might be wondering, you're covering a BL anime in July, but wasn't Pride Month last month? Yeah, but you see, um, I covered this outside of that on purpose. Why, you might ask? Because Pride Month is obnoxious. You should be proud of who you are 24-7, not one month of the year. So let me get this straight. You want me to believe if someone's gay, they're only allowed to be proud of it for 30 days out of that year? That's just stupid to me. I also like to think uh, maybe I'm covering it outside of Pride Month because I like to think of it's because I'm a dick. Anyways, that aside, um, yeah, love stage. This anime already wasn't made for me. You already know I'm not into the slice of life romance thing. And the whole BL thing makes it doubly so. Again, if you are, that's fine. More power to you. Hell, I don't care what anyone's sexuality is either. If you're gay, cool. But yeah, let's see what this show's all about, and who knows? Maybe it is good. I don't know. Well, I do know, because I watch it. We're going to talk... You know what I mean. So, Love Stage. Oh, I'm sorry. Love Stage! Because there's two exclamation marks, just like Bastard. Why is that a thing? Is a manga written by Aki who did World's End and Prime Minister and a bunch of other works as well. And illustrated by Mikio Suda, who's worked with him numerous times before. The manga would begin in July of 2010 with an anime by JC Staff, the people behind Food Wars, meaning they are equal opportunity. They make, you know, gay stuff and straight stuff, which, good, that's how you should do it. Make things for all of your audiences. The anime would air in 2014. Sentai would release a sub-only Blu-ray in 2015, before giving it a full English dub in 2019. You know, Sentai, you would save money if you just put out one release. It would also make it less confusing. It's not like I accidentally bought a couple of your sub-only releases before because they were marked down and I thought they were also the dubbed releases. No, I definitely haven't done that years back. <sighs> okay, rant aside. What is Love Stage all about? So, we follow 18-year-old Izumi Sena, who wants to be a manga artist. The problem is his manga drawings suck, and his family wants them or wants him to follow them in their footsteps of being entertainers. His dad's in the music business, his mom's an actress, and his older brother is um, the lead singer of a band. So, you can imagine what they want him to do. Well... He doesn't want any part of this. Wouldn't you know it, though, a commercial he acted in when he was really young with another guy, or I guess boy at the time, named Ryoma, is celebrating its 10th anniversary and they want the cast back together. So he goes to film said commercial, and apparently he had to cross-dress in that commercial when he was younger, so they make him do it again for the anniversary event. Thus, the boy he knew from back then, named Ryoma, who's also a big-time actor, sees him and immediately confuses him for the woman he fell in love with years back. I think you all see where this is going. He finds out that that chick he loves is actually a guy, and can't get that guy out of his head, thinking he was hetero this whole time, but now starting to realize he's awakening to his gay inner self. His gay shadow, if you will. And, yeah, the anime does the whole will-they-won't-they they thing as they struggle to get through their feelings. That's basically the size of it. The problem is, some of the ways it goes about it, it could have done better. I can't say any more without getting into spoilers, but we'll save that for a different time, as in at the end of this. So... First, the animation. JC Staff, y'all know what to expect. I heard it's good, etc. Music, very okay. Nothing like Ilium this time. Yes, Ilium. I'm aware that one or two times I said Lilium for some reason during the Elfin lead breakdown. Don't ask. 
But anyways, yeah, OST is very passable for a show like this. So, let's get to the reason this is called Dubster Dive. First, the ADR director was David Wald, who was also one of the writers, which they openly admitted they got him in because they wanted someone who was actually gay to work on the show to give it an authentic feel. And you know, that makes sense. I actually totally get that and would agree to do something along those lines. The problem is some of the decisions they make with the dub. We will get to that when I bring up the audio commentary. Yeah, this Blu-ray release has an audio commentary. Should I feel gay for just owning this? Anyway. <laughs> um, so, the other scriptwriter is Marissa Lenti. Apparently, they've worked together before on Bloom Into You and Todd and Never Falls in Love, two other romance shows I've never seen and don't know when I'll get around to. Again, you guys know this isn't my thing, but who knows? So let's get to our cast. First, we have Izumi Sena, who's basically a femboy. That, that's, that's the nice way I could put it. He looks very effeminate, often confused for a girl by his more feminine features, and is also the, is a nerd. He's voiced by Greg Aris, who's Negi from Negima, Nagisa from the Free franchise, and Frost from Dragon Ball Super. I believe I heard somewhere David Wald wanted to cast a gay voice actor as one of the main sh characters in the ship, and a straight voice actor, who we'll be getting to in a second, as the other ship, to make it feel a little more authentic. So, I don't know where I heard that from, I, but yeah. So take that with a grain of salt. I, I just remember seeing that somewhere. It wasn't on the commentary, though. Um, but yeah, Greg Harris, I think, does an all right job. He tries coming across as androgynous, but the problem is it's hard to buy because you can still tell it's a dude, yet everyone is still confusing him for a girl, even acting like his voice makes him sound like a girl when, I'm going to be blunt, it really doesn't. Which, to be fair, I quickly checked out the Weebanese track, and it seems like it's voiced by a dude in that language, too. If it's not voiced by a dude in that language, and I misgender that person, people are going to give me a lot of shit for that. Probably going to get a lot of hate for this uh, dubstep dive anyways. <laughs> but yeah. So, but aside from that, I think Greg Aris did an okay job. After him, we have Ryoma, his main ship, and a famous actor who's basically realizing that he wants to come out of the closet, as it were. And um, he's basically a big-time actor that gives off an air of arrogance unless he's hitting on someone that he likes. So when he thinks Izumi is a girl, he's like, you're the, you're my queen, etc. You know, he's simping hard, to put it bluntly. He's voiced by Adam Gibbs, who you all know I think is a very good voice actor, and it's no different here. Natsuo Todoroki from My Hero Academia, um, Hinata from Alcana for Rhythm Across the Blue, the anime, and Shin Akira from Chika the Coffin Princess. I've tried to come up with more roles I haven't said by him yet, being as how many times we've covered him here. And he's also Nero from the Saint Seiya Shitty Knights of the Zodiac reboot, which I found out Crunchyroll got the rights to a third season, and they're simuldubbing it. Why is this continuing? Why was it this killed? <sighs> Anyways, Adam Gibbs, I think, is one of the MVPs of the dub. Him and um, Greg do a great job. So, yeah. After him, we have Ray Sagara. Ray Sagara is the manager for um, Izumi's family. He's the one that takes care of all the planning and the stuff for the whole entertainment industry for them. And he's also the pseudo surrogate second parent, I guess, pseudo mom figure to Izumi. And, yeah, he's the one trying to guide him through his whole being gay thing, I guess, would be the best way to put it. He's voiced by David Wald. Yes, yes, asshole casted himself off to writing the script as well. Who's Veto from Black Clover and Nindo from Psyche K. So, yeah. And I think he does really good in this role as well. You can tell he's trying to come across like the mentor figure. And he really gives off the caring parental vibe, I guess would be the best way to put it. 
Next, we have Izumi's family. First, Shogo Sena, his older brother, voiced by Greg Coat. Oh, the siblings are both voiced by Gregs. I get it, that's just stupid. He's Dojima from Bloom Into You, and Nakamura from Devil's Line. And yeah, Shogo is okay. He, it's clear he has somewhat of a little brother complex towards Izumi. To the point of being obsessive, where he's like, I won't let anyone take him away from me, no! And he spoils him to the point of absurdity, getting him body pillows of his favorite anime characters, etc. But I do think he's a hilarious character. He's fun to watch. Him and his rivalry with Ryoma is also pretty funny, too. So I think Ray Code did not. Next, we have Ethan's parents. First, we have Nagi Sasena. <sighs> Voiced by Monica Real. Well, shit, maybe that's why he's gay. If I were raised by her, I probably wouldn't want to be hetero anymore either. Come on, guys, that was a joke. Monica is known as Sakura from Subasa Reservoir Chronicles and Cardcaptor Sakura Clear Card. And Bulma 209! She's the 209th voice of Bulma. The streak continues. I hope all of you got that reference. And... It's just a typical Monica role. She's trying to do her deep voice, and that's really it. Uh, I, I don't really have much to say about the parent characters, because they don't really do all that much, to be honest. Ray is the real parent trying to raise Izumi at the end of the day. So... As far as the dad goes, we have Seiya Senna, voiced by John Swayze, who you don't know as Zoroku from Alice in Zoroku, and Gendo Ikari from Evangelion, the, um... Rebuild Films dubs, both of them, and the uh, director's cut dubs. Do you think Gendo would accept Shinji if Shinji came out to him and said he was shipped with Kaoru and that he liked him? Huh. That's an interesting debate for you guys to have. <laughs> no, John Slazy does all right again. Like I said, the, um, the problem is the parental characters don't really do all that much. Hell, you never even see Ryoma's parents, to my knowledge. Only a couple characters left that really matter in the grand scheme of things. So, next we have Kasumi, who's Ryoma's secretary. Um, she's voiced by Brittany Karbowski. Rimuru, from that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I don't care if that's a trap, man. I want that damn slime. <laughs> and Misaka from the Asserton franchise. But yeah. And this is another character who also doesn't get much. It's your typical Brittany Karbowski role. She just comes across like Secretary Kuhn. So, again, a lot of these characters don't really give you that much simply because um, the show isn't primarily focused on them. It's doing its best to focus on the relationship between Izumi and Ryoma. So I don't really have much else to add about a lot of these. Same with the next one. Takahiro, who's one of Izumi's manga friends. Yes, he has others, but there's no point naming them off because they're kind of irrelevant and don't add much to the plot. Takahiro, meanwhile, does help him out of funks here and there and gives him some advice every now and again. He is voiced by Josh Greeley, who's Armin from Attack on Titan and Yuri from Yuri on Ice, the one who doesn't have the accent. You know, the one kicked with Victor, which I will say right up front, I do think this is a better Yaoi BL anime than Yuri on Ice. But yeah, Josh um, gives his, it's his, a more serious role. Takahiro is the, you know, serious best friend Kuhn type. Not really much else to say. He, he just comes across like the caring, serious friend that you have the straight man, I guess. Yes, 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 I know. Stupid pun. The last major character I want to mention is Ryuzaki, who's the head of the firm that Ryoma works for. And I'm bringing him up because he has a really thick British accent for some reason, and even does the whole, you know, bollocks, and calling people gits and stuff like that. It feels really out of place and odd would be the best way for it. Especially when his name is full-on Weebanese, yet he's got a thick-as-hell British accent. I don't understand. He is voiced by James Belcher. Luca Vaughn. And Dr. Harada from Chihaya Fudu. You know, we've covered Babylon enough here. Maybe it's time I watch that show at some point. And 
I mean, the accent he gives him is silly. It's fucking hilarious. But um, he does okay with what he's given, I guess. The character is meant to be taken over the top. As far as the a couple of other standouts, Ian Sinclair is in this dub. You know, Whis from Dragon Ball Super. David Wald is also ad voices. Caitlin Barr is several characters. Brittany Karbowski is several characters. Um, Monica Royale is another major character. She voices Lala Lulu. If you don't know what that is, like, Lala Lulu, what the fuck is that? That is the magical girl character that Izumi is obsessed with, you know, from his favorite anime. And, yeah, so no matter where he goes, his mo the two most influential women in his life are voiced by Monica. Holy shit, that does answer everything. Also, Chris Sabat is ad voices? Why? You even get him voicing a, a cross-dresser, too, and putting on the stereotypical lisp. I just... I, I don't get it. But yeah. Tia Bauer is a several ad voices. Hey, how you doing? But, um... <laughs> The the dub suffers from recycled voices really badly. The dub itself, though, I will say you can tell that there was passion put into it, particularly with the three mains, um, Greg, Adam Gibbs, and David Wald. They all gave it their all here, which that does feed back in what I'm saying. He wanted Adam Gibbs, or at least a straight voice actor, to play... Um, fuck Ryoma simply because he said it would fit better and be more authentic but yeah as far as some of the stuff that stood out in the dub for me some of the f great quotes I have is when um Ray is talking to Izumi about him wanting to be a manga artist and he says you draw like a drunk in the dark with his left hand and I'm just like the fuck is that supposed to mean how do you know the drunk isn't left handed and um this is definitely a doubling line when Izumi is introducing his brother Shogo, he's like, Shogo Senna, but he just goes by Shogo, like Elvis or Napoleon. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? But yeah. Um, you also get Ryoma saying just, who do you think I am? I'm the legendary Ryoma, which could be a possible Kamina reference from Gurren Lagann. I don't know if it is. But with Marissa Lenti working on this, and she is a sound cadence person, and they love referential dubs, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But hey, you get Ray yelling, don't make me get out the hose. So, there's that. <laughs> as far as issues I had with the dub, um, or not the dub itself, but with the show itself... So when Ryoma is confessing his feelings, I guess, to Izumi, he mentions what it was like climbing up the celebrity ladder, how he was sexually assaulted. And it's just, he says that and then just nonchalantly moves on like, so yeah, climbing up the ladder was rough for me. And it's never like, it was just brushed under the rug. It's like, whoa, 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 dude, you just dropped a bombshell on us. And we're just going to move on like you didn't even say anything about it. Not to mention, this is brought up right after he tries convincing himself that he's not gay by trying to force Izumi to strip, because he says if he sees him naked, it'll convince him. So again, pseudo-assaulting him, it just feels at odds here, I'm just saying. But yeah. Which leads me to the other problem with this show... Again, obviously spoilers, but you all know how this show is going to be with it being a romance. You know how the couple shit's going to go. It takes Izumi nearly getting raped by a few goons for him to realize he loves Ryoma. With him shouting, the only one who can touch him like that is Ryoma when he's about to be assaulted. And then he's like, wait a minute, what did I just say? <laughs> it's like, what? What? You fuckers couldn't come up with anything better to have him understand his feelings better? I, I just... I don't know. I feel this was a bit tasteless. But yeah. 
I mean, you do get some hilarious conversations, though, with Izumi asking Ray what it's like for two guys to, you know, do it, and if it hurts, etc. Which leads into the OVA, which is only included on the Blu-ray, by the way, where, yes, you do get a full-on scene between Greg Harris and Adam Gibbs' characters. It is dubbed. Yeah, that was definitely a thing I sat through. <laughs> Uh, in short, the anime itself, not for me, definitely not. I'm sorry, guys. If you like it, more power to you. Again, I do think it was better than Yuri on Ice. I'm glad I watched it in the sense of stretching the proverbial legs, as it were, since this isn't. This is way out of my comfort zone, and yeah. Um, the most interesting thing for me is the commentary, which I'm going to get to here in a second. But yeah, if you want to watch the show, it is up on High Dive. The OVA is not. It is exclusive to the Blu-ray, which I got on a sale a couple years back for really cheap on Sentai's site. Shoutouts to them. They've got good deals. I literally paid seven US dollars for this Blu-ray. So, um, but yeah, I'm sure a lot of you probably disagree with me and think this show's great. And if you do, that's fine. No, more power to you. But for me, nah. This show had a lot of problems, and I feel they could have tackled a lot of its subject matter and handled shit a lot better than it did. Particularly with the, you know, sexual assault shit. That that was bizarrely handled. Um, but yeah. As far as the commentary goes, um, it's with David Wald, Marissa Lenti, and Hannah Trum, who's one of the brand managers at Sentai. And Sentai, like they said on this commentary, they believe this deserved a dub because this anime is important. And I'm just thinking, okay, so the, it, sure, you did it for your bias. And the reason you don't dub other shows, like Redo of Healer doesn't have a dub, as well as numerous other shows they have the rights to, because fuck them, they're not love stage. Yeah, we're already off to a great start, and this commentary just began. Um, <clears throat> But yeah. This is where they confirm that um, David Wald was picked to work on it because he wanted to give a, you know, perspective of what, you know, the, the gay perspective, I guess, of working on the show. But then it devolves into them talking about altering the script because when the anime came out in 2014, they felt that a lot of it was dated by 2019. <sighs> Motherfuckers. Are we going to have to keep having this conversation? It is not your job to alter the damn script. You adapt it as best you can for English speaking audiences. I understand some alterations need to be made. I get that. If it's something that's deeply entrenched in Japanese culture, maybe some alterations do need to happen. Like that happened with some of the jokes in Bleach. But there is a point or there comes a point when enough is enough. Moving on from that, though, they did answer one question I had when talking about why the OVA was exclusive to the license holders, or I mean the Blu-ray. They said that oftentimes the OVA can be held by different licensees, basically. That it could be owned by the same company, but a different committee is overseeing the OVA in Japan, so different negotiations have to be made. And yeah, so OVAs can have different streaming rights, basically. That actually makes a lot of sense. I'm still glad they went out of the way to dub the OVA, though, because if it's on the Blu-ray, you might as well dub it. Right, Funimation? Oh, yeah, gotta love this gem, though. Marissa Lenti saying everyone here is on the fans' side or on the side of the fans. Okay, sure, I'm sure it is. They also confirmed they casted Josh simply because he was in other BL anime, you know, like Yuri on Ice and stuff. I guess auditions sometimes really don't exist. Hell, David Wald even said the second he knew that the dub was greenlit, he already had the cast picked out in his head. So uh, I really don't think they picked out any cast auditions. They just said, hey, Greg, get in here, etc. And... <sighs> All right. It's time to get to the biggest slap in the face on the commentary. So they talk 
what I brought up earlier, the show's approach to the whole sexual assault shit, right? The anime's approach to that. David Wald would actually say that America now has a problem with it as of 2019. Remember, this commentary was recorded in 2019, and he's acting like it didn't have a problem with it before. So, according to him, sexual assault wasn't a crime in America before 2019. That's the way he makes it sound. That no one took it seriously before then. Do you know how fucking stupid that sounds? Just like they also confirm that during the, um, lovemaking scenes, shall we say, they wanted to make sure that it was clear to the dub speakers that the two characters consented because they believed the Japanese could have done a better job at doing that. Again, not your place to alter shit like that, but whatever. Just fucking... That's basically all I wanted to go over with the commentary. It was frustrating to say the least, but yeah. So I guess that really covers everything I wanted to say about the anime. Again, not my cup of tea, but if you're in it, more power to you. I could see why a lot of the Fujoshis, or even if you're gay or whatever, you're interested in this anime, I get that too. Makes sense. It's just not for me. As far as if there's anything else, um, there was a light novel spinoff called Backstage. <laughs> oh yeah, in the back, no me. Um, who knows if that'll get an anime someday, don't know. But either way, I guess that's it. MVPs of the dub, definitely the three mains. Greg Aris, David Wald, and Adam Gibbs. All three of them, I think, did a good job. This was a very um, different experience, to say the least. So, glad I covered it. Definitely something a bit different. I guess that's it. Let me know your thoughts. If you don't agree, disagree. If you want to punch me, I don't know. But yeah. Um... And we all know traps for life. But yeah. Hope you all have yourselves a fantastic day. And be proud of who you are 24-7. Okay? Don't let a single time of the year dictate when you're allowed to feel proud. Because I'm sorry. That's just fucking stupid to me. Until next time, guys. Thanks again. Have yourselves a great day. And Sentai, dub Onipon already. Come on, you dub this. Do both sides of the spectrum. Be equal opportunity and all that. Give us Oni Pawn already. <laughs> Till next time, guys.